All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I got 8.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and like every week, I value everybody's time, and I respect your time, so I always give a little couple-minute cushion at the beginning, let people come in, and usually I start filling in in the first five or ten minutes, so I appreciate your time. We are already in spaces number nine, and this is the ninth time I've done a space, so doing my best to uh, build on the success every week, giving it all I got taking any feedback that people have for me. And so far we've done, uh, I would say, this, especially the special guests have done an amazing job every week. Because remember, like I say, every week at the beginning, same thing. I'm not the expert. Don't come to me for financial advice. Obviously nothing I say is financial advice or anybody in this space. However, I like to bring in people that excel in certain parts of crypto and investing and have them share their knowledge. Because remember what I always say at the end of the day, we're obviously all here here to make money. We all can win, but we all need some education because we don't know everything. No one is perfect. We're all learning in the crypto world as well as in the real world. So if anyone says they're an expert and they know everything, run the opposite direction. So tonight's space is going to be a little bit different. Uh, before I before I let the guest speakers introduce themselves, a little bit different. I don't have a like the other spaces where I have a formal set of questions, discussion questions, we're going to go around. Um, you know, I titled this one a Dream Labs Community Chill Space uh, because there is a, part of my French, but a shit ton of amazing things that have rolled out in just the last couple of weeks when it comes to the Dream Labs community. Um, and I wanted to kind of uh, build off the back, so to speak, of the CEO Drew last week's space, where he kind of unraveled some of the amazing things that are happening with this, with this, uh, with Dream Labs and what they're rolling out with all the projects. So I thought it'd be best if I invite team members from each of the Dream Lab projects, uh, those that have launched and those that are soon to launch, to kind of have a little casual conversation. I'll let them introduce themselves, talk you know briefly about each project, because I'm sure we'll have some people that don't know much about it. But I also going to encourage you guys a little later on to, to grab the mic and come up. Um, you can ask any questions that, that you have for them. And if there's something that they can't answer right now, then obviously we'll get the answer to you as soon as possible. We got some pretty, pretty high level people here uh, that know a thing or two. So I just wanted to start off the same way I do. I would shoot for about 90 minutes for these sessions. And we're going to let these guys speak a little bit. I'll guide the conversation. But then later on, I'm gonna let you guys come up and ask any questions that you have because it's a real exciting time to be part of the dream ecosystem. And, and one of the things I want to leave with before I let these guys talk a little bit is, you know, myself and several people in this room have been talking about dream since it launched in January. And now everything take good things, take time to develop everything's starting to come to fruition. And we're seeing that and all the different projects that are coming out and all the hypes come out. So without further ado, I'm gonna let these gentlemen introduce themselves. Uh, talk talk a minute about themselves, what their role is uh, with their respective project, and we'll kind of go from there. So anybody can jump up there, or I can call. Out, I could be the teacher and call on you guys. All right, Scott, you're up then. <laughs> I'm up. Yeah, you're up. I'm calling on you. What was the question? I'm sorry, I was. <laughs> I was, people are messaging me like crazy because of that trip. Oh, you're just good. Just, just, sold. just briefly introduce yourself, what your role, what role is with what project, uh, you know, anything that you want to share about yourself. Um, I'm Scott. I'm from the, the dream, um, project. I guess it's the whole ecosystem and I kind of help fa facilitate with, I guess all the projects. Um, you know, PESA, and obviously I helped, you know, in the beginning with that, but I just, I help with the community and um, help Drew behind the scenes, help get investors, um, kind of the the key investor guy, and I just reach out to people and uh, just try to help Drew, I guess, manage the, the not so important things because he's uh, obviously doing the, the bigger things on his end, so... I just uh, try to make things easier, and uh, I'm more of a community guy. Awesome, and yeah, thanks for taking some time here tonight. And uh, Easy, you're up next, Easy. Hey, everyone. Uh, how's my mic? 
You're good. Beautiful. Uh, my name is Eric. I'm the CMO and co-founder of Pace at Token, which is the blockchain solution for remittance. Um, it's run uh, initially by two of us, myself and Dr. Phil, who some people may know or may not know, and uh, Scott as well. Uh, as he mentioned, he's a, a huge part of the project in, in helping with investor relations as well. Um, so we're running a, running a blockchain project that helps people sending international money transfer. And my role with that is I work on the marketing end of it, but uh, also uh, both Phil and I work on the strategy end of, of what we're doing and piecing deals together. So it's kind of a cooperative, uh, whereas I, I focus more on the front facing stuff while he's in the in the back end working on the development side of the company, as well as back end parts of our DAP and everything that's integrated into the token with the remits app. Awesome, awesome. All right, Kryptonitest, you're up. Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm the Kryptonitist, also known as Lou. Uh, I am the CEO and lead dev of Houdini Swap. Uh, some of you probably already know what Houdini Swap is, but just very high level. Houdini Swap is an anonymous swap platform that breaks the link between the sending and receiving wallets. And during that process, you can swap between a number of different currencies. We haven't yet launched a token, but uh, one is coming in the near future, and we are under the Dream Labs umbrella. Glad to be here. Thanks, Doc. Awesome, and thanks for taking time out, uh, Lou, to be with us. And, and Landon, you're up. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Dr. Dre. Super pumped to be here, and thanks for the community for, uh, for listening. Uh, my name's Landon. I'm the CMO and co-founder of Amino, formerly Bitcoin. Um, obviously, I've been involved in, in the Dream Labs ecosystem for quite some time now. Uh, I have my own call channel, and, and I'm one of the uh, the bigger marketers in the space. So, uh, got quite a bit of experience with uh, launching pro projects and, and helping with marketing uh, strategies. So, uh, super pumped to to be here and, and chat and, and be uh, accompanied by some other great projects here. Uh, easy, Scott. Cryptic, uh, you guys are, are awesome, and, and I'm a big fan of all of your projects. So, uh, like I said, pumped to be here, and thanks for having me. Awesome, and I know uh, Jamie was from the Huddle Huddle Hotel team, but I know he's in uh, in England time zone, so he had to set his alarm clock. Maybe it didn't go off, but maybe he'll pop in here hopefully. So, before we get into it, what I would like to do, obviously, the goal of this is to kind of give a little. Uh, a little pitch or a little, you know, five minute spiel on the project. I put all the links up at the top um, in the nest to the various Twitter and websites. Uh, I didn't mention at the beginning, but I, I kind of always talk about it in every space is that, you know, I'm not paid to do any of these. I'm just an investor. Everything that I do, all these videos that I put on our, my new YouTube channel are all because I believe in the ecosystem and I'm heavily invested in it. Yes, I mess around with some other projects. But 95% of my holdings are all in the dream ecosystem because they've been performing and they're legitimate projects with legitimate people behind it. And they're all producing revenue and people who have invested in it are making money and, and, and the real the real gains haven't even started yet. So I wanted to kind of put this together uh, as a way to kind of spread the love, so to speak, and spread the knowledge, because, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would agree with me that DeFi, you know, I'm not talking about blue chips, obviously, that's a whole nother story, but. DeFi in general is convoluted with a bunch of scams and rug pulls and, and devs that don't know what they're doing and unanswered questions and promises of, of, of utility coming down the road. But right in front of our faces, we have real legit projects that are producing and ones that are producing before um, they're launched. And, you know, uh, we're going to get to each of these guys. I'll give these guys a couple minutes to talk about the projects that they're repping and then we'll obviously open it up to questions. But just as a quick example, you know, uh, to put the cryptotists and landed on blast a little bit here is that these are two projects that haven't even launched yet from the GM ecosystem. You got the cryptotists with Houdini Swap that's that's actually working right now. It's been working for how long, Lou? What a month, two months already? Yeah, just yeah. just coming up on uh, two months. Yeah, and it's eight. It's already a a platform that you can swap anonymously cross chain, and the token hasn't even launched yet. We don't even have a date for it. Because it's going to come after Amino, which is another project that's going to have the app and everything ready to roll for launch on a central exchange. So you've got some real heavy hitting stuff here that 
I kind of get discouraged a little bit because people aren't talking about it, right? They're, we've been sharing it for months, but you know they're going to have to chase the FOMO after it launches. So I kind of do want to do my part to share what I know and what these guys know to DeFi as a whole so they can kind of get educated on some real projects. Now, I'm not saying these are the best projects out there. There are a lot of good projects out there that aren't in the dream ecosystem. I just want to share things that I know about that I'm winning on because I want everybody to win at the end of the day. So I think it makes sense. Um, before we jump into each of these projects quickly, is it kind of defined for people who are new to to my spaces or just Dream Labs in general? And any of you guys can answer this. I'm not going to call on one person. Um, could we define for everybody what it means to be a, a, a Dream Labs launch project? Because a lot of people people ask me questions like, "What does it mean? Like Pesa Base is a Dream Labs la launch pad. What, what what does that mean to be a part of that launch pad?" Any of you guys can kind of tackle that one. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, just from experience alone, uh, initially the way that it started out was it was, I'm not going to say a standard launch pad, but we were still trying to figure out what the best avenue is to go. So a lot of it had to do with helping with marketing, um, helping with uh, a legitimate contract writer, someone that's reputable, and uh, and getting a good, uh, like good back end behind it that people can trust and that'll be part of. Um, like part of the same sort of large scale that Dream is. Initially, it was made just so that uh, they're all under fixed trading hours. I don't know if a lot of people remember that, but we were all uh, supposed to go under fixed trading hours. And then it evolved into what the community brings, what some of the, the top investors bring to the table and some of the advisors on team. So instead of it just being a launch pad where, yeah, we'll help you, we'll give you the reputation, we'll call you out, hopefully you get a good pump, it became something more of uh, a longevity play where – communities merge, people get to know each other's projects, people see the nature of the projects as they evolve and basically provides like a, a, a like a, an ecosystem within this whole ecosystem where you can look at these different projects, buy and sell in between them um, based on what they have going on, what you know, what levels that they're at, where they'll retrace to, and you can actually uh, strategically have your own market made with all of these projects that are in here as an investor. But as, uh, as someone that's part of a project, it's been nothing but the insane high level of networking, meeting all the right people, coming up with a ton of ideas, um, having little think tank meetings, and a ton of support. Um, because, yeah, everyone that's on this panel here, I, I know you in one capacity or another, um, and we've definitely done business together in one capacity or another as well, too. And that all came out of, well, I'm not going to say thin air, it all came out of uh, Dream and starting off with, uh, with being part of, part of Dream first. Yeah, Scott, did you have anything you want to add from the from the investor being a dream investor lead there? Yeah, he, he pretty well covered it. I mean, it was dream where it is today is is not where it started out to be. Um, like you said, dream was a mental, you know, focusing on mental health and kind of relieving stress in crypto and had fixed trading hours. And um uh, we realized it just didn't work. Like Drew realized it. Um, we had discussions with the community, and we just evolved, uh, changed, changed with the market. Um, and as far as like what Dream is, it's it's just Dream is pretty streamlined. I mean, it, it's just a launchpad project, but it a, a ton of projects come to us, and to be honest, like ninety to ninety five percent of them. Like Drew and I talk about it all the time and they just get turned away. Um, they're just not, they're not good enough. They're, they don't have the utility. And I mean, even projects where Drew is actually friends with the people and he, and he says like, no, I'm sorry. It's just not, not good enough. And as far as like what dream does, um, for one, it leverages our community and our whales, which is, amazing but it also does like you know funding and helps with the the concept improvement and things like that business strategy and then you know we have the the devs for the software development and and drew's marketing and blockchain integration the whole the whole gamut of things and at the end of the day one of the biggest things that you get is drew and I know that sounds crazy, but just his connections and his ability to find the right people and putting the right people in the right positions that know how to do things 
is is massive and and he'll be the first one to tell you he's not like um the best at everything but what he is really really good at is finding people that are the best at that particular thing so it's just going to grow and expand man yeah i remember i still remember in our dream whale chat when dr phil got on it was kind of like the shark tank i'm sure easy you're in the room and he you know because because uh Drew was like, yeah, we got all these, I got hundreds of people that are turning in applications to be the first Dreamland project, but, you know, let's listen to this guy first. And he happened to be one of the, also one of the holders of Dream, Dr. Phil. And I remember him being on camera and going through Pesa Base and the platform. And we all had questions, kind of like, you know, little our little mini shark tank there. So, you know, he's very, he scrutinized everything. Obviously he makes the final decision, but, you know, one of the good things about him is he does takes feedback, not just from the whale group, from the main TG, because he's, He's o he's always in there, but I'm not going to take the thunder away from Landon when we get to talk about Amino a little bit with connections and how that stuff comes because I don't want to I don't want to rain on his parade because I'm sure he's going to share some great stuff for the group as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so Scott, great great overall discussion of Dream, you know, real concise. It's a revenue generating uh, beast, I would say, coming to fruition now, and it's just ba basically pulling in that that revenue from each of these projects that it's going to launch. So. I'll let easy if you want to jump in. I know you mentioned like a, a briefly what Pesa Base is, but can you give us like the two minute uh, elevator pitch for Pesa Base? Totally. So, uh, Pesa Base is the blockchain solution for remittance. What we do is we leverage blockchain instead of using it. Um, and what I mean by that is there's tons of remittance addressing projects out there uh, where you can send crypto and it's it's fast and it's virtually free with a, a little bit of fees. Uh, for people that have DeFi wallets or have bank accounts uh, to withdraw to or shops that accept uh, cryptocurrency. But there's a major limit on that in the uh, eight-figure mark of people in various countries that don't have access to bank accounts. So what it is, it's a remittance platform that was founded in 2017 that addresses this issue so people can actually um, send money back and forth to each other and it goes through blockchain to reduce fees and wait times and arrives at the end user in fiat um, and if they're unbanked it can show up on their cell phone or to an agent directly so that they don't have to uh, they don't have to have a bank account or have any access to any sort of DeFi wallet it's basically business as usual as if they were sending it through Western Union uh, but it's through a digital platform where they send money and it's converted to crypto through blockchain, sent to the end user through blockchain, and then receives on the other end at 90% less of fees and instantaneously. And the token is basically an extension of the company in the sense that we create a shared economy. So as the company continues to grow and expand, the token does as well. Uh, it's on the brink of being plugged into the company where every single transaction that is made a portion of the transaction fee will be bought up as a new buy on the chart, which stabilizes the chart and basically brings in money from an outside entity other than crypto. So we're not dependent on market conditions. We just keep scaling the company bigger and bigger and the token rises with it. So question for you, Easy, and this, I'm asking the same questions that people would ask me when I talk about PESA Basin Spaces is, what's the difference if, say, well, I can just use an online platform like Google Pay or or PayPal or some of the other apps in the app stores for sending money. What what's the this, what if you could come up with one of the or two of the main distinguishing factors of what makes Pesa Base different? What, what would you tell people? It's simple. We're we're the only, um, and if there's someone that knows of one that I don't, then we'll be the leading uh, blockchain technology company that is um, completely compliant with anti-money laundering regulations and approved and in partnerships with telco companies so people can send money to cell phones right away, which is a lot different than, yeah, exactly. PayPal, Google pay, whatever these platforms are, you can absolutely send money back and forth. But if these individuals don't have a bank account, uh, to with, withdraw it to, or shops that use that sort of technology, which we're centered in East Africa to begin with, expanding into uh, various other parts of Africa where these sort of technologies and new age stuff that we do use, especially in rural areas, is, is unheard of. And it's unheard of because it's not needed. The only, the only uh, option for them is Western Union, which they're accustomed to paying 10, 20, 30 percent in fees for in order to process these transactions. And that's been the norm for decades upon decades and increasing as inflation increases as well. Um, so we are able to 
actually transact the same that you would if you were to be using a regular platform to the most remote locations in Eastern Africa and surrounding area. And it arrives on their cell phone the same way it would if it was transact, transacted through any other um, digital platform that requires a bank account. This one does not. Um, same thing for us. What's also different is for those that don't have access to technology, we have mini banks that are continually being developed to pop up in these areas so that we actually have mobile agents that can go around and disperse actual uh, Kenyan shilling to individuals that uh, that don't have the, the same access to cell phones. Awesome. And just, I, I, I don't know if, I don't think you mentioned before, but so these countries that, that currently are able to utilize PESA base, so the, when it gets sent over uh, through the blockchain, it automatically converts to their native token, correct? So the end user in an, a country in Africa or eventually in other parts of the world, I know you guys are already planning on expanding and working on that, is that they don't need this app to utilize it. All they need is a, is a SIM card in their phone, correct? Other than obviously bank account if they have one. That's correct, yeah. So the, the main UVP of PesaBase is that the barrier to entry is like absolutely minimal. You just need to be able, the, the sender just needs to have access to a cell phone from anywhere in the world that they're sending it from and have the PesaBase app downloaded and they can send money. The end user doesn't even have to have an account. It can just be sent directly to a mobile number. Uh, so there's no barrier to entry. Anyone can will be able to use it and send it to any part that we have authorization in to send, which will continue to expand over time too. Um, so it's just, it's it's taking one of the most blatantly multi, multi-million dollar issues, solving the gap for it and making it extremely easy and, and more cost effective for people. Awesome. Yeah. And I definitely, I did a, I did a full 90 minute interview with easy and also a review of PESA token. I'm also with the cryptotist too. So in my, if you go to my profile on Twitter, there's a link to the YouTube channel. I started a couple weeks ago and you can, you can get the full rundown on PESA base and, and most, many of these projects. I haven't, haven't hit them all yet. So thanks, Easy, for the quick rundown. All right, Lou, why don't you give us a little two-minute spiel about uh, about uh, your platform? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm I'm happy to. So yeah, the general the catalyst for starting for starting Houdini Swap is just very high level. The blockchain is you know there's obviously a lot of benefits with how the blockchain works with everything transparent. Everything is um, everything is verifiable. It's all in a ledger, et cetera, et cetera. We all know the benefits of blockchain, but the problem that comes with that is that people are watching you, right? Like people are watching your transactions, uh, whether it's you're paying back your friends, you're buying a gift, you're donating to a cause, um, you're submitting payroll if you're a company. Like people can see all of that on the blockchain, or it's your investment activity. You have some big wins, you become a whale, you have a huge loss, like you're a DJ and you're a part of the Celsius network, whatever it is, people are, are watching your investment activity. And then overall, people are, are watching your net worth, right? Like which wallets are interacting with which, which people have huge bags of even just ETH, right? Like whether, whether or not it's a, an investment in something that's, you know, lower market cap or higher market cap, people are watching. Uh, and you see it all the time. Like Scott, when he, he came on the call, he was saying that he was dealing with something uh, because there was a big sell. Like the first question in the community was, who did it? Who did it? And people found out who did it. And to me, that is, you know, to us, to the Houdini swap team, that's that's just wrong. Like, A, it's none of people's business uh, what we spend our money on. If people knew my spending habits on Amazon, they'd probably no longer be friends with me. Um, it's, it, it, it's freedom of movement. Like people are, are, people should be able to move freely within the crypto ecosystem, buy, sell, whatever it is. It's, it's really none of the community's business. And second is personal safety. Like having everyone know all of your whereabouts, your investment activity, it can lead to things like doxing. Uh, people can befriend you based on common interests, hack your email etc find you in real life like there's some crazy stuff that happens in crypto and houdini swap is here to to fix that wait <laughs> what, what what are you buying on amazon man i need to know <laughs> yeah we'll uh, yeah well well thank goodness you can't find it. but uh can you I, I i was amazed when we had the chance to... it's what, yeah 
when we had a chance to do our space last month, I, I, we don't have to yeah. go through the whole technical part of it. But can you share real quick before we move on to Landon about how you're able to how you're able to use someone's picture and trace all of their their findings and all the inform all of their holdings and everything about them within a couple of yeah. minutes? Yeah, sure. I'll I'll go through that. And, and just for anyone who doesn't know what so what Houdini swap is, that was the catalyst for it. What it is, just very simply, is it breaks the link between sending and receiving wallets, so people cannot track who the sender is, who the buyer is, and tie them between, right? Like if it's you sending money to yourself or it's you sending money to a friend, there's just no verifiable connection. It breaks the link. It does it using Monero, Monero as a tunnel. Uh, so I, I won't go through all the, the specifics of it, but that's how it works. And I can go into more details if anyone has questions. Well, I, We've I done, don't, oh, oh, yeah. I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I know I know some people are probably thinking this right now. I'm just going to ask it before you go through that example I mentioned. But can you tell everyone, because I know people are thinking this, well, they shut off Tornado Cash and it's illegal. What's going to make what's going to make what you're doing? Why is yours legal? Yeah, yeah, great question. So um, Houdini Swap is, is <laughs> like Doc alluded to, 100% legal. We've had legal opinions about it, all of that. The reason is, is because we don't actually take custody of anyone's tokens. We are a conduit, uh, so to speak. So think of us almost as like, a wire passing through different exchanges and passing through Monero, but we never actually take anyone's money. No money goes into any Houdini swap wallet. It just goes in one exchange through the Monero tunnel and then out another exchange. So it's not us that touches any of the money. We are just a conduit for these anonymous transactions. So we're, we're a hundred percent legal. Um, because the real issue is when people are holding other people's money, that's where the problems come up, right? Like if, if you are holding someone else's money, then you're subject to a ton of different regulations. Like you're technically a bank. So we avoided all that. It's a new system. No one else is doing it. Um, the, cool ex the, the, cool, the scary example that I gave on our last AMA was around, uh, I was able to, I went through an example, but just very quickly, I was able to find someone's display photo of an NFT and I used Google reverse image search to figure out what the NFT collection was. I used the attributes of that NFT to find out who the NFT owner is on OpenSea, found the NFT owner's wallet. Um, so now I know who the user is because of their display photo. I found out their main wallet for holding their NFTs, looked back a, a couple more steps, saw where money was coming in, where money was coming out from. It was all, you know, three different wallets that it was coming in and out of. And I found out that they were, you know, I found out all of their investment holdings. They were dream holders. They were PESA holders. I now know exactly how much. I didn't talk to the person, obviously, on, on the AMA. But it, it was just a way of showing that, that you know, like, it, it's easy enough for people to find out your financial information. And when you're in the real world, you don't walk around with a name tag of your net worth and you don't hand people your past 100 trend, like, credit card transactions. It, there's a reason for that. It's privacy, it's safety, and that's what Houdini Swap is here to solve. Yeah, and there, there's a couple of people in this room. I see a Coke Zero and a Swag and a Yak. Uh, Landon, when you have a chance, can you reverse image their uh, pictures and just let me know what they're holding? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I know people, the million dollar question is, how, how the hell do I buy Houdini Swap? And the answer is, it's not live yet. Uh, it is producing revenue. Go figure, a utility is producing revenue before launch. But shameless plug here for all the folks listening and those listening on the recording, uh, to get in the pre-sale of that when it is announced, you you got to be a holder of dream. So I'm going to throw that out there. That's one of the, we could talk about that towards the end, and I'm sure Scott will touch on that later on, is that's how you get into these gems is you're, you're, you don't have to be a, a whale and dream to get into these pre-sales. Anybody can. It's just your level of investment increases when you're whale group versus uh, just a, a holder in the, in the main TG. So that's definitely something you want to DM Scott about. And he could talk about that later on. All right. Next up is Landon and talk about Amino. And I'm sure a lot of people at the end are going to have questions for you, Landon, because Drew and you, man, you guys are just changing the whole DeFi game with Amino and it hasn't even launched yet. So the floor is yours, sir. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for those kind words. Uh, Amino, it's funny because it, it's transpired into something much bigger than what we originally had uh, planned for the project. Uh, originally, the project was actually called Bitcoin for those in the community that uh, that Oh, is Landon Z. Ruggin? I think you're on mute, Landon. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're good. Landon kind of phased out a bit. Are you there, Landon? Can you guys? There can you, you go. guys hear me now? Yeah. You start over. Yeah, you're Sorry, good. Sorry, I turned off my uh, I turned off my Wi-Fi. I think my Wi-Fi was rugging a bit, but. Uh, yeah, I was just saying uh, Amino's kind of transpired from something different than what we originally had intended. Um, we've been working on Amino for over a year now, uh, which is pretty crazy in, in terms of the uh, kind of scope of crypto and uh, the preparation that's gone into this project is like nothing I've, I've ever been a part of in the space. Um, like I said, we, we started as Bitcoin and then we rebranded into Amino. Uh, and what we are is uh, a bridge between real world activity and tokenized rewards in the Web3 space. Uh, so to put it very simply, our, our application, uh, which you could download on Android or on iOS, uh, you'll be able to essentially track your steps. But it's more than just a, a fitness cryptocurrency. It's more than just a move to earn token uh, like some of the other competitors in the space. We've really built out a full ecosystem where you are incentivized to be healthy. Uh, and, and live a healthy lifestyle, um, and then also kind of with with the use of innovation, uh, innovative solutions to uh, redeem those tokens and purchase real world uh, utilities such as merchandise or fitness applications. Or uh, you know, in the future, we're we're aiming for massive partnerships. So think of like Lululemon or Nike, where you go for a walk, and after you know two months, you accumulate one hundred fifty dollars worth of tokens. And you can go ahead and buy some sneakers or a sweatshirt or uh, you can use it towards uh, purchasing Peloton applications, uh, you know, to work out at home. Or um, There's just so much real world utility that we're going to kind of bake into the uh, tokenization of the, the project in itself. So uh, for those that don't know, we have a, uh, an NFT drop with, uh, with a strategic partnership with Binance. Um, so that's kind of unheard of at this at this scale uh, to do that pre-launch and, and that vetting process to have gone through it and uh, come out on the on the side of you know that partnership. It's just it's so big and it's it's going to create so much of a, a ripple in the space. Obviously, the sentiment's not great in the ecosystem in the in the uh, the space right now, I should say. But um, these kind of partnerships and and uh, just being associated to to Binance NFT and uh, some of the other strategic partnerships that we've we've rolled out, it's it's just at a scale that we haven't seen in the space in uh, pretty much forever. So I guess that would be kind of the first thing. And then the second thing, most recently, for those that don't know, uh, we have a, a partnership multi-year with the uh, Washington Commanders the NFL team. Uh, obviously, that's a rigorous process for onboarding, and um, and we were able to uh announce publicly a partnership we have branded logos all over their facilities we're all over their jumbotron we're going to be having activations with their team and players um it's, it's just a huge opportunity to to get mass adoption and uh and bring a lot of eyes and attention to to a project that's going to bring a lot of good to the uh the ecosystem and, and to the space uh, individually so can you can you speak to i don't you know i, I know drew Drew mentioned he might be able to pop in, but I know he's a busy guy. But can you speak to uh, how the NFT dropped? So I know Clay Thompson is going to be the first one. And I, I think they set a date. Didn't they say October 15th or something? You can correct me if I'm wrong. But from a revenue generating standpoint, like how? Because people already asked me, well, if it's a zero tax token, which Amino is, how is it making money? And obviously the NFTs and all these deals and everything. But are you able to speak at all on how... Amina will make revenue from, for example, each of these NFT drops? Yeah, totally. So obviously, like you mentioned, it's, it is a zero tax token. Uh, so for those that are wondering on, on how the project is going to fund itself or 
how are we going to make money? Obviously, we own uh, a portion of the token supply that will be vested over a long-term schedule. Uh, this isn't a week or month or year project. This is going to be something that uh, you'll see in the space that we consider uh, has the potential to be a top 100 token uh, in, in the overall uh, ecosystem. So in terms of the uh, NFT drop in particular, uh, the, the drop is actually called Grails. Uh, so it's going to be kind of the Amino Grails drop, uh, strategic partnership with Binance NFT. Uh, it'll be launching on October 18th. So that's going to be the first drop. Uh, that'll include 10,000 mystery boxes with each one selling for around $50. Um, some of the rare NFTs will unlock special, such as like Clay Thompson memorabilia, uh, whether that includes uh, autographed jerseys, basketballs, photographs, uh, media greets, uh, tickets to the playoffs or, or season games. Uh, there's going to be just so much cool stuff for, for those that uh, do participate in that mint. Um, and, and like I said, it is with Clay Thompson from the, uh, Golden State Warriors 2015, 2017, 2018, 2022 championship uh, winner. Uh, you know, just to be uh, having a, a guy like that support the project and be an ambassador for the project, it's 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 pretty insane. So we're we're very grateful and excited to uh, to kind of have partnerships like this. And um, in terms of the kind of the the revenue structure, uh, we aren't even banking on you know making money from these drops it's more about the exposure and uh just having a partnership with binance is so bullish and uh there's going to be plenty of ways that we're going to be able to uh make make profit and uh and drive revenue for for the the token in itself so we're not too worried about the the small gains we're here for the long term and uh just excited to to launch and and really bring as much attention to the project as possible Awesome, and what? And I'm only asking you these more in, intense questions because of the because of the recent announcements, and everyone you know is asking and wants to know. So I, I appreciate the the rundown on how the revenue works with that. What about what about the the uh, Washington Commanders? What you know? I I saw it said health and wellness partnership. Can you like talk for a minute or two on you know what the ins and outs? Like, what's the benefit for Amino? What's the benefit for the Commanders? How is that partnership gonna kind of play out? Yeah, this this is super exciting. Uh, probably the most excited part of the project for me so far. Uh, I've worked very very closely with their uh, their marketing division, and uh, and we're super excited and grateful to uh, to, to partner with them. Uh, the commanders that kind of scale. The NFL is is probably the hardest vetting organization in the world. I'd say for uh, in terms of they're doing their due diligence and partnering with. Uh, with strong organizations and projects that have real potential, whether that's in the Web3 space or, uh, you know, in traditional business sense, uh, they really are, are all in on, on us and we're all in on them. And they're big fans of, of the space and Web3 and they want to grow with us uh, such as we want to grow with them. And uh, in terms of the deliverables, it's, it's a really uh, hefty partnership, I'd say. We have complete exposure in their facility every field goal kick at home uh, we take over their jumbotron uh, like i said we're going to have activations where we're going to go there and interact with their fans and uh, just being associated with them and, and the brand exposure they have you know thousands and thousands of people at every home game uh, the content we're going to be able to get we'll be getting footage in the dressing room footage in the practice facility footage with the players uh, and, and down the line we do have expectations to run uh, really cool competitions with them, whether that's competing with their athletes for like, if you can get more steps than them in a game, or if you can compete with uh, an NFL player and whoever wins, you know, you, you can get some sort of merchandise. It's there's so much potential for kind of fun contests and uh, whether that's challenging friends or challenging the uh, NFL players, it's uh, it, it's just kind of a fun way to, to engage with the community and promote health and wellness while also uh, monetizing the act of being healthy and um, the application for those that don't know, it's, it's very intensive and uh, at the same time, very simple, but it's, it's clear, it's concise, it's easy to use. And it's uh, just a really fun way for everyone to, to remain healthy and uh, partnering with someone that, that encourages that health and wellness aspect uh, being an NFL team. It's, it's something we're really excited about. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing all that information. I know, each of you gentlemen, we could sit here for an hour and a half and talk about solely your project. Um, but uh, 
the rundown was very clear. And one of the things I want to throw out to everybody is the app obviously is going to be ready before launch. Some of us in the dream community, the, the, the main TG and the whale group have been able to uh, beta test some of the limited function. I know that you guys didn't unlock everything on there, um, but it is out there and we are giving feedback too. So when it comes time for this to launch and, and then I already see people messaging me, when is it launching? <laughs> but we don't, we don't have a date yet. I know Drew's been talking a lot about talking with uh, some central exchanges, top tier exchanges to launch at. So I know he mentioned uh, hopefully the end of this month or early November. So I'm sure that's going to be some big news and people are really going to start going crazy when that, when that date comes out. So what I like to do, and as we're doing this, if anyone has any questions, now's the time you guys can start requesting the mic. Um, but what I like to, you guys to do is go through and kind of, other than Scott, obviously, because Scott's, you know, the dream rep, but for the other gentlemen, Easy, uh, Lou and Landon, the relationship between your token that you're representing, uh, you're running and dream, meaning like the financial benefit, like what, what makes it a dream lab project and what kind of uh, relationship financially is there between your token and dream? Uh, well, very simply put, it's just it's an exchange of equity in the project. So um, we initially had part of our uh, two percent of our tax in perpetuity uh, that was going to go back towards Dream, but we um, structured a deal that's mutually beneficial for both projects, that where we both continue to support each other and have um, have substantial holdings amongst our big bags that we already have already. Like we're all whales in each other's projects to begin with. So it's just the share um, of the projects where uh, we continue to support each other and, and Dream got uh, some good income from all of their help that they that they had, especially in the beginning with launch and such. Um, they were able to receive uh, payment both in PESA and in, in uh, their native token as well too. Awesome. All right. But Alou? Yeah, so... Um Houdini every so once the Houdini swap token launches, uh, we're, the token is going to be called Poof. But once the token launches, uh, Dream will get uh, somewhere between two and three percent of all transaction volume uh, of the taxes in perpetuity. And then on top of that, Dream also owns a portion of the actual company itself. So they'll hold tokens at that. Uh, they'll hold poof tokens and they'll also get a percentage of all the the income that comes into the company as well. So Dream is is heavily tapped into Houdini Swap and and rightfully so. They've been an incredible partner. They're the reason, you know, like the main reason why we've been able to scale to over two million in transaction volume to date. So it's it's well worth every single deal, every single percent fee that uh, that Drew combed out of us. And then now that you mentioned that, literally while you were talking, I grabbed those screenshots. I believe you posted them in our whale chat today. I put them up on the Jumbotron before he jumped to Landon. He said that, Landon, so I want to I ask him the question. I put up I put up in the top. Can you kind of briefly describe to people what that chart is? And keep in mind, I know I said it and Lou said it. This is not launched yet. This is, this is already creating revenue. So can you kind of walk through that chart real quick? Yeah. So we had no idea how much interest there would be in Houdini Swap when we first launched. Um, it, it was a tool that that I basically built for myself to begin with. Like it was something that I felt was was needed for me, uh, and we put some tech behind it and just and and put it out and see what it would do. Uh, so these two charts are just our progress to date, which again has no marketing, like our. You can check how many followers we have. It's very few on our on our Twitter, and then it's just to the the dream community basically. But anyways, where we're at is the first chart shows the total swap volume to date. So these are uh, people who have swapped on our platform. Very different than like trans than um, than trading volume for a token. This is swap volume. So people have put in money and out came. The okay, put in crypto and out came crypto on our platform. Uh, it took 62 days to get to 1 million cumul cumulative in total swap volume, 
but then only 30 days to get to the next 1 million, which just shows the trajectory of our growth as being absolutely insane. And then the second chart that uh, we put forward was just showing the the two, you know, two of the key metrics that we track, which is weekly swap volume and weekly transaction volume. So number of swaps and total volume of swaps. And you can see it's just like basically straight up into the right. I mean, we started off by doing, it looks like 20 swaps, maybe 30 swaps a, um, a, a week. And right now we're doing over 160 and the weekly volume has just surpassed uh, had, well, it's just surpassed 400,000 on a, on a weekly basis, which is just absolutely mental to think that we're going to be launching with $400,000 in weekly volume. Token hasn't even launched and um, Houdini Swap earns a percentage fee on all of those swaps and then that'll be used for buybacks to support the token's growth. So can, I, I, I can't do math in public. I'm not even going to try, but I'll make it easy for you. Uh, Let's say this token launches, and I'm just throwing random numbers out there. Let's say Houdini Swap's doing a million dollars in transactions a day. What does that mean for Dream? What does that mean for Dream? That's that's kind of something that you'd find on like you know, on like a brain teaser question in a, you know, in, in a math exam. But what it means for Houdini Swap is it means that five thousand dollars would be going back every single day into buybacks gross now net off of that um a certain percentage would go to dream so dream would get a, a small percentage of that as buybacks every day dream would hold the tokens so there would be appreciation in the tokens that dream holds in their vault uh, and dream would earn percentage fees on the tokens that are traded so in theory as poops chart continues to go up and to the right uh, more people will be buying, maybe more people will be selling at the same time, you know, just like as a high volume token does. And a certain percentage of those will also go into the Dream ecosystem. So Dream wins in every in every way as Houdini Swap transaction volume grows. Awesome, awesome. All right, Landon, sorry, I diverted from getting to your question because I wanted to post that chart up there to show people. So the relationship, financial relationship between uh, Amino and Dream. Yeah, absolutely. And before I get to that, I just want to kind of segue from from this point. Uh, I haven't seen anything like Houdini Swap in the space when when Drew kind of first told me about it, and I uh, I actually tested it myself. It must have been about a month and a half ago. I was I was so mind blown by uh, by the utility, the fact that you don't have to connect your wallet, that there's no opportunity for any kind of uh, phishing hacks or, or exploits to your 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 wallet, uh, but also being able to, uh, you know, privatize your your funds and, and transact. People watch my wallets all day. Uh, I, I buy a lot of tokens. I uh, transact with you know 30, 40 people a day, and and a lot of people are watching my wallets, and and I don't like that personally. So. I started moving money myself. I've probably been half the volume on Houdini Swap just because I love it so much. So uh, I haven't had the chance to, to say this kind of publicly, but it, it's absolutely one of my favorite utilities I've, I've ever seen in the space and uh, really, really excited for your launch. So congrats on the traction so far. Uh, in terms of your question, um, very similar to what Easy said, uh, obviously Dream owns a, a portion of the token supply and uh, and every time kind of the team sells, Dream will benefit from it. Uh, Dream's probably the, the, the best launch pad in the space uh, in terms of the quality of the projects that are coming off it, whether it's Pesa, uh, Houdini, HODL, uh, and, and most recently, uh, obviously, Amino. So uh, just the scale of what we're doing and, and the funds that will flow back into uh, Dream could easily push this to 100 million market cap with, with ease. I think people are uh, are kind of sleeping on a project like this. Uh, funny enough, the you know the title being Dream, it, it just makes sense. But I think people will start to realize that you can put your money in these DGen plays that could two x or three x or five x, you know, over over twenty four or forty eight hours. Uh, but the chances are you're going to get crushed by the taxes. Uh, a lot of these are, are kind of farmers that are 
have high taxes on their projects. Uh, a lot of them are dying. A lot of them are getting rugged more now than ever. I'm seeing rugs every single day. Unfortunately, it's kind of the black eye in the space uh, where all these devs are, when the sentiment gets bad, people are desperate and, and they're rugging you know, projects. It's, it's horrible to see, but I think people will start to realize that why would you invest in a project like that when you can invest in a launchpad like Dream, uh, which really accompanies all these high quality tier one projects. Um, and all you need really is one of these projects to, to blow up at scale, whether it's Amino, Audle, Pesa. Uh, you can you know argue that Pesa already did blow up at scale and you can see how, how successful it, it was already uh, for, for months and how it will continue to be successful for many months. Uh, but really all it takes is one of these projects to go to 100 plus million, 500 plus million, a billion market cap, uh, and, and the funds that will flow back into Dream, uh, even just the small portion will will make this one of the biggest projects that could easily, easily 10x from where we are now. Uh, so in terms of a comfortable hold for me, it just makes no sense to dabble in these nonsense DGN coins when there's quality projects like this that are really an umbrella to all these sub projects uh, that we're, we're launching on that launch pad. Yeah, also, and I see every day in front you got questions, so I'll get to you guys in one second. I want to ask one question because I know for Landon, since you're talking about Amino, are there any tokens out there that exist, whether they launched earlier this year or last year, or whatever, that I know nothing's going to be comparable to Amino because you guys are doing, you know, tenfold more utility than what some of these other, but to give people listening now and people listening to recording, if I put you on the spot and say, can you give some uh, one or two comparisons to something that is along the, the same nature as what Amino, Amino is going to be? Are there any tokens out there that you can compare to? to give people? The reason why I ask that is to give people some kind of comparison to look at market caps so they can make their own, own judgment of what's about to happen. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, in terms of comparables, like I said, the scale of what we're operating on is unlike anything we've seen in the space. We're aiming to be a top 100 token. I'd say uh, the, the most most comparable, which is still very far off from what we're doing, I'd say, is a, a project like Stepin. Uh, obviously, I believe they were around 20 billion non-diluted. Uh, we recently saw Sweat kind of launch out of nowhere, uh, and they went to around a billion market cap. Uh, just to put that in perspective, if we're launching at general public around 7 million and, and private, whoever got in kind of early through the Dream Launchpad, uh, around 14 million. Uh, which is kind of unique in the space to be 50% down at launch price. That's just how bullish it is because the price will fly at launch, um, which is kind of crazy. Most most of the privates will will be up 50% or they'll boost the tokens by 30% or, or something along those lines. But uh, the closest comparable would be something like Stepin. You know, it's another move to earn token, but they don't really have that same kind of ecosystem uh, where you can redeem rewards through a catalog uh and they don't they they've had some pretty solid partnerships i don't want to say they haven't but uh just in terms of the scale uh our team the the commitment and the uh the success we've already had and, and we're going to continue to have is is really unmatched in this space so uh even if we do 50 percent of what Stepin did that's still going to be for the community and for dream uh i don't have the exact math off my head but you got to figure it's around 50x uh, at minimum. So you can imagine what that'll do to the dream price uh, if they own even just half or one or 2% of the token supply of, of Amino. Right. And yeah, just a quick recap. So, you know, Landon said 2% of the token supply of Amino is owned by Dream, not Drew, not Landon, Dream, the company. That's the revenue share. Uh, the Cryptotest mentioned, I believe he said two, they haven't come up with the exact number, but two or 3% of the of the daily transaction plus a significant percentage of the total supply and easy mentioned that they have a they swap tokens right easy between at first it started with two percent of the daily transactions but then it converted to each of you guys holding a massive bag of each token correct for sure and, and uh just on that one of the core reasons too is just that pace is not going to be a uh tax token for very long, uh, just based on our direction and, and where things are going and what we're piecing together, uh, there's there's really no need for tax. It's already being used 100% for buybacks only. Uh, we don't use it to spread across marketing and dev dev income or anything like that. It just all goes towards uh, 
all goes towards buybacks, make sure that we're sustaining the bear market, coupling it with the revenue from the company. Uh, but uh, with Dream, we knew that early on that we weren't going to be taxed for long and wanted to make sure that we structured a deal that made sense. Yeah, I mean, so the, the winning game is to hold these tokens and obviously hold a nice bag of Dream because you'll benefit from, from both. So, you know, that's I just want to kind of go over that real quick again because a lot of people ask me, you know, what's the utility of Dream? What's the purpose of it? And, you know, it's just your, your the utility is getting the revenue from all these amazing projects that they're launching. So awesome, awesome. So we got a couple of questions so far. So Fred, uh, Fred was waiting patiently and then we'll get to every day. And please, guys, this is your opportunity. A lot of people say, oh, I want to ask the dev or team members questions. Here's your opportunity right now. You got you got people from the team of of almost all. We don't have Hotel Hotel, but almost all the projects. So now's your chance to ask whatever questions that you have. Uh, Fred, you're up. Hey, Buff. What's up? What's up, man? How we doing? Yeah, thanks, man. Good to see you guys on this page. Uh, I just wanted to know about um, Pesabase. Is the app already uh, functional? Is it out already? Yes, it is. You can download it in the uh, in the Apple Store or just visit Pesabase.com as well for the web app. Oh, okay. Is it also on the Android for the Play Store? I believe it's optimized for Android. I don't talk to a lot of people with Android phones, to be honest with you. But uh, I think uh, it's uh, optimized what? for such a lot. What's oh, Android? I actually, I've been asked that before. What's Android? <laughs> uh, all right, thanks, man. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out. Thanks a lot. Yeah, just to add on to what Easy said, though, I don't I don't know. You might have mentioned it before, but one of the things you got to understand about PesaBase is it's been around for five years. It's an existing company. They tokenized it. And it launched at the end of April, so it's a an established company that's producing revenue month after month for years. Now they're just going to put it on steroids, and they're a lot of. I don't know if Easy wants to wants to talk about any of the expansion plans, but if he if he doesn't feel comfortable now, we can hold that for another time. Um, every day, what's up? Uh, just oh. one sec, just for the uh, the question that you had though for recipients, like people that are receiving money. Um, like yes, the the app. I'm I'm 99% sure it's optimized for Android. Um, I honestly just haven't been asked that before. But for recipients, it can be received on any device, not a smartphone. They can have an old, um, you know, Motorola Razor flip phone, and and they can still receive money on the other end. It's not required to have a smartphone in order to receive. Oh, okay, thanks a lot. Hey, every day. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I just got a quick question for uh, for Lou. Um, I know you said your app is running all, or your swap is running already. I've used it a couple times, um, and that you're launching the token soon. Um, will there be a presale available uh, for your token before it launches, or is that already been done, or or um, are there any plans to do anything like that? Yeah, great question. No, there has been no pre-sale done uh, to date. There will be a pre-sale available for Dream loyalty holders, so Dream Whales and above a certain threshold hold of, of holding Dream. And then on top of that, we're figuring out a way to let our users of the platform get whitelisted as well, uh, to some respect, depending on how much they've swapped before. But we're finding there's a little bit of complexity with that just because, you know, I won't get into the details, but it's a little bit difficult, but that's the idea. We want to let the users of the platform get whitelisted because those are people who will care and, and not want to just get a quick flip. These are people who understand the value of it. And second, dream loyalty holders, people have proven they can hold dream and they just won't go for a quick flip because we need a really strong foundation. Or we, we don't need it, but we want a really strong foundation here. Uh, of just people who love the project. Yeah, yeah, and I'll be going head to head with Professor Scott um, and all these guys to get like a Max bag and Houdini. I'm such a maxi on that project; it's not even funny. Uh, down to like the the foundation of where it came from, what it actually does, and the branding. Like I've always been since you uh, since you first brought it up, Lou. And uh, so yeah, I'll be I'll be climbing for that top bag and that i'm already whale and everything else but houdini just has this like special thing that uh i just want to go hard on well it's it's math I want that's that's why i asked him that math question and i i knew he wasn't able to give numbers right now but when you look at what it just you know i know i'm sounding like a maxi right now but i don't give a crap because it is what it is it's money right but when you look at what it's doing already and you look at the numbers that 
you know, when we talk about this is a dream lab space is all part of the ecosystem. Obviously, everybody's urged to hold these tokens individually, but you really wouldn't be a smart investor if you're not holding dream as well. And you just look at the standpoint of the percentages that dream is going to own and the transaction fees is going to take. It's just a no brainer of where the price of dream is going to go short term and long term. I mean, it's just simple math. Yes, people are going to sell. Obviously, people are going to buy. But overall, you have true revenue. And, and, and big ups to Easy and, and Doc. I always talk about you know them launching. I think it was what? It was a couple of days after my birthday. I think it was like April 22nd. And then we had our massive correction in the market soon after that. But it still ran up. I mean, it launched at what? Four cents and ran up to 38 cents. And most of that was in a span of a week. So during, during the, the trash of the market, obviously, it's not better yet. But you, these things are performing in this bear market in the height of it. Can you imagine what's going to happen when we actually trend upwards next year and a couple of years from now? It's just, you know, it's there's a lot of good projects, like I say, but, you know, these things are, are showing their true colors in the bear market. Not only that, like, yes, like with Pace, we had a great run up. But if you take a look at like zoom out on, on all the projects that are currently active, like the charts are strong. Volume and growth is completely like we are so deep in this bear market right now where we're absolutely getting obliterated. Yet there's like there's no sweating on this whole end of the ecosystem, like Dream included, Pesa included, Hodl included, like anything that has launched, it is all safe, it's all fine. The fact that we have whales freaking out over ten thousand dollars worth of sales, I think is awesome. Because it's like that's how that's how like little movement there is going on in the market right now. In a bull run, nobody would would care, but it, it has an effect that people actually care about these projects and the, and the health and longevity and the little guy too. Like I'm involved in all the whale groups as well. And like, we don't want our smaller investors getting dumped on. We don't want people that are getting, um, that are new to crypto that just found a project to get dumped on. And that's what's happening with all these DGen plays. And I know, <laughs> I know that lots of people here that invest in them, you know, 20 K market cap and see if it flies to 200. That's, that's all good. I just think it's bad for, um, mass adoption and people that want to get in. But when you take a look at the system and how we have multi-million dollar market caps of these projects, long-standing price structures that have that have existed where you can you can actually find out historically through data of the chart where to make an entry on and know that you can get there, know what the potential is when the team drops alpha and where things run up to and, and when sort of the, the potential of these projects, Dream, $60 million, PESA, um, ran up to almost, I think it was 40 40 cents we almost uh, got up to an auto as well to had an amazing launch and a run and it's all sustainable. It's all still there. It's not these 48 hour flips. And that's my own personal opinion. I just, I, I'm a long investor, not a trader. Um, and I believe in fundamentals and companies, but I, I know crypto is, is much different, but I find that within this ecosystem, it has that perfect pairing for me where I can look at real companies, their dynamics, where they can go based on what they can deliver and I have the patience to, to wait it out as well, too, which I think many do. And it shows on all of our charts. Yeah, facts, man. Total, total 100% facts. Every day, you got another question? Yeah, just real quick. And this is for um, for everybody and their, their own projects, because I'm only familiar with the numbers required for uh, Dream itself. But for each of your projects, um, you know, you guys keep mentioning that there are whale groups that are invested and, and they're proven to hold in this and that. But can each of you guys um, kind of give a quick breakdown on what the minimum is to be a whale in your particular project and whether or not there is a max wallet allowed for each of your projects? Yeah, our max wallet's a million PESA tokens. And as far as uh, getting in the whale group, it's a, it's 100k PESA as our number, but I also pay a lot of attention to the person and like what they, what they do within the community, chatting about the project. There's, there's whales that are invested based on just the fundamentals of the company and not just the potential of the token to skyrocket as we scale the company. And that says a lot to me because we're, we're just so accustomed to being selective since private sale. Um, me, Scott and Phil spent well, know, a little month um, uh, just vetting uh, basic holders, people that we didn't know to get a bag in private sale to ensure that it was going to be, you know, strong holders, people that knew how to take profits responsibly and, and, and vetting them to make sure they held dream. So 
for getting in the whale group and, and 100k is yeah one part of it but there have been people that have turned away that have larger bags just based on trading history i don't need someone in that group that finds the news every single time and because we're very transparent our whales always know first that's one of the the benefits of being a whale um takes advantage of the news dumps their bag then the, the then the community dumps their bag as a, as a result of it and they buy back in when it's quiet wait for the news again like we just they all go in the bathroom we have a huge we have a huge bathroom at pace of base and they uh they, they get tossed in there <laughs> yeah i would have to agree it's not just about um the amount of tokens you hold uh, uh, you know a lot of factors come in like like easy said you know selling patterns and integrity honesty what what your attentions are for the project if you have the same vision i mean it can't just be about about money if you have enough money you can get in because like easy said i have turned away many people and i also have let a couple people in that don't have quite the amount of tokens you know they're very very close um and they say they're going to add in the future and but it's more about the integrity of the person and you know when i get these messages from people about wanting to be you know whales and what it takes i don't just try to give like two word you know answers i try to get to know the person and, and see where they're at in crypto and um try to get more on a, a personal level with them and and just kind of feel out what kind of person they are um and as far as like the the whale group for dream it's 150,000 uh tokens um and i believe i could be wrong i believe hodl is either 500,000 or 1 million i'm not 100% sure i think it was a million yeah, i'll go next Re really easy we're not launched yet so it's kind of an irrelevant question but yeah we will have obviously like max holders at level we'll have all the all the bot protections so we'll obviously have uh max wallet and all of that at launch as well i'm pretty sure that's going to be the same answer for landon uh yeah for us it's a bit different we're going to be launching on a, a tier one centralized exchange so uh we're essentially just going to adhere to their compliance and regulatory requirements uh bots is not really a concern uh when you're launching with with an experienced partner like uh kucoin or huobi or uh any of these tier one exchanges so uh we're in that process right now and just completing the due diligence and uh we're, we're excited for that awesome i just want to reiterate for everybody these gentlemen speaking about you know whales and token amounts so you know when you think about i'm i'm only a year into this crypto game and when you think when i thought about the word whale I was thinking hundreds of thousands of dollars, but that's not the case. I mean, like Scott said, Easy said, it's a lot about the integrity. So, you know, using Dream as an example, he said 150,000 tokens at the price right now. I think that's probably about, what, 15K, a little more. But like he said, if, if, if you have a conversation with him and looks at your wallets and you have the integrity and the character, there, there are people that don't hold that many tokens. Same thing with Pesa Base, because it's, it's really an, an honor to, to be a part of that group. And I've got one more question for the group, but I just want to use in like an example, um, you know, and then I saw this at first glance as, as an investor and as someone watching the charts. So a token that launched a month ago, it's not in the dream ecosystem. I'm sure you guys heard of it, Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin, uh, it was created by one of the dream whales, Simon. Simon Moore is one of the dream whales and he brought the token to drew and it wasn't necessarily a fit for the dream pad the dream launch pad but he definitely obviously gave him his ideas and, and helped him a little bit um but part of the part of the opportunity for us in the whale group is that he set aside 100 bnb for a private sale um, and in the whale group we were allowed to put in a max of 10 bnb he didn't even sell that out because we didn't know what was going to happen with it. So in the in the dream, in the dream, in the Bitcoin TG, they're very transparent. Simon's killing, he's doing an amazing job. But he told everybody knew that Dream Whales had were 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 had vested tokens for seven days in this in it for Bitcoin. And 
getting closer to that seven days after launch, some people started to sell. The FUD obviously started in the chat. And we're all sitting there laughing, all of us in there that had it and commenting in there. We're not going anywhere. And literally at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that seventh day, when we got our tokens, not one of them sold. Not one of us sold. I had the opportunity to get in too. Nobody. And then within 24 hours, the price went up over 40%. So, you know, when we talk about the integrity of being a, a dream well, and thank God I'm blessed to be a part of that group. I found my way in right after launch. But these group of, of guys and gals that are in there are serious investors that are taking profits responsibly. And moreover, you know, Easy and Dr. Phil for PESA Bay, Scott and Drew with Dream, um, they encourage profit taking. There is no hodl for life in these tokens. These are legit businessmen. We all have a common goal to make money, you know, build strong community and friendship also. But that's the one thing I want to share about that is that when you hear the word dream well, and you're going to hear a lot of it over the next couple months in, in DeFi, I promise you that it comes with the level of integrity, like Scott said, and like Easy said. So I just wanted to kind of give kudos to you guys and what you guys are building in your own communities. And I'm I'm 100% positive that Lou's going to be building that in his community. And obviously Landon and Drew and God knows how many people are on the Mino team already, but they're going to be building that that sense of community and integrity in there as well. Um, the last question I have, and please, if everyone ha anyone has any questions, request that mic. But the last question I had, and then we'll wrap it up, is, and I'll let each of you guys talk about this. What are your uh, goals, aspirations, expectations, whatever word you want to use for your project for the rest of 2022 and then rolling into 2023? So I know I know Houdini Swap and Amino haven't launched, but obviously they're going to be launching this year. And you could also speak about you know, what your goals are leading up to launch and right after that. But once again, what, what are each of your goals or aspirations for your individual token as you wrap out 2022 heading into 2023? And then I'll do my drawing and give away the 200 and then we will call it a night. Yeah, I could, uh, I could take this one first. Um, in terms of the goals, obviously, uh, we're, we're really looking forward to the launch. Uh, right now, our main focus is just securing uh, a tier one partner. Uh, that process is very intensive, especially now um, with with the market conditions and sentiment. So uh, it's, it has taken a little bit longer than we originally anticipated, but uh, things are looking really good. We're, we're moving that process along uh, really well. Um, in terms of kind of a market cap goal, I don't want to speak too much on a number. Uh, we're just really interested in doing the right things. And, making the right partnerships and the value will come from that. Uh, but like I said, we, we aim to be a top hundred token. So uh, we, we really have massive goals for, for market cap and we, we'd love to get it to, uh, you know, 500 or a billion dollar market cap uh, after launch. Um, we we want to make this the, the biggest launch of the year in terms of our partnerships and team and, and uh, everything we're doing. It's, it's out of scale like no one's ever seen. So, uh, we're we're really excited, and and I suspect that the the price of the token will follow uh, the amazing things that we're doing in the space, and we're just uh, really excited to keep pushing forward. For uh, for us on the pace to end, so we'll um, it's not as much of an aspiration. Everything that we wanted to accomplish this year is done and going to be delivered to the uh, to the community. Um, we're on the cusp of it. We're just kind of finishing up a, a couple of things, but we, we aspire to do lots of things. We settled our intentions uh, shortly after launch and we've completed them. And uh, so there's going to be a pretty major drop coming to PESA that's going to carry the token in the company into Q2 of next year, at which point there's a plan for Q2 where it comes more from the company side than it does the token side. So it's going to be token first uh, before end of year. And, uh, and everyone's going to, you'll know what I'm talking about when we drop it. It's a bit of a flare for the dramatic, but we've just been working so long on these things that I just wanted to drop a nuclear bomb all at once, um, just to have some fun with it and, and watch things send again. And then, uh, and then on the company end for that, what our plans for that are going to start, uh, yeah, end of Q2 next year. And, uh, and, and those are going to be great as well too. So just, uh, just stay informed. I always say check the TG, check our Twitter. Um, everything will be laid out. It will all make sense as far as what's coming and and uh, and and why and what we're doing with it. Wait a minute, I think I cut out a little bit. What'd you say? What the big bomb was? 
I think I lost connection. Yeah, it's probably because you're on an Android. <laughs> All right, next up. Sure, I, I could go next. Um, for us, we're, obviously, we're we're very focused on launching the token that's coming up after the Amino launch, which I, I personally just cannot wait for. Uh, you know, Landon said some nice words about Houdini Swap, and, and I'm I'm gonna say some nice words about Amino, not because just to reciprocate, but because I've just been holding it back for so long. Like what you guys have done with with Binance and with the Washington Commanders is outrageous. Like I, I couldn't even imagine any other crypto project even sending an email back and forth with Binance outside of their support line. And to be able to be their premier NFT partner when it comes to sports is like, it, it's there are no words that can be put to it. It's, it's completely mental. So anyways, congrats to the whole team, but it doesn't even need my congratulations. They all already know it. Um, the uh, So we're launching after that. <laughs> so hopefully everyone will have some hopefully everyone will have some spare cash that they can take out of their gigantic bags from uh, either from Amino or just from anywhere else uh, in life. But anyways, we're, we're launching after that. Uh, what we're focused on right now and moving forward is just building out the platform. Like we are, we're a tech company at heart and we're treating it that way. And we are building out some really interesting features and services to uh, create a larger umbrella under security and privacy. Um, we're building a fiat on-ramp so people can buy crypto with credit card anonymously, fiat off-ramps, people can buy um, gift cards and people can uh, pay off their credit card using crypto. That's something we're developing. And what? then we're going to be expanding. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. What did you just say? <laughs> say that again? I had never heard of that. Did you just yeah. say that you're going to be able to, I'm going to be able to pay off my well, maybe not my wife's credit card, but my credit card with crypto? That's the plan. We're working with one of the largest uh, fintech providers of uh, in crypto. So one of the one of the, the people behind the scenes that you might have never heard of, but these are the people processing billions of dollars of transactions. They're one of our partners, and they are looking into developing technology to be able to um, basically send a negative balance into your credit card. So as if you're paying off your credit card, right? Because you can buy crypto with credit card. So why can't you buy credit card with crypto? You know what I mean? <coughs> so that's what we're working on with them, building out some new tech there. And then we're looking into getting into other privacy things. This is something we haven't, we haven't dropped publicly before, but we're looking into white labeling VPN services. So protecting your browsing history as well under the Houdini Swap platform. Some cool features there where you can pay with crypto and all sorts of other cool stuff. There's a lot. We got a lot planned, uh, and it's it's very very early. So well, exciting times. I don't know. All I know is I've heard Drew say on Spaces and in groups that he's thinking that you know Amino might hit a billion dollars in the first couple of days. So you're going after that. So what? Two billion? Is that is that what the goal is? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I think Amino sets the floor for us. That's how it works. They're, uh, whatever they hit is the very minimum that we'll hit. I, there you I, go. Put that on record. <laughs> <laughs> Man, dude, the fact, I never heard that credit card thing. That's amazing. Is anyone doing that stuff or that doesn't exist yet? Uh, well, there's obviously there are crypto credit cards, right? So you can, like on crypto.com, you can actually uh, create a crypto credit card where you deposit funds in crypto and then you can um, use it as if it's a credit card, use an actual card as if it's a credit card. So yeah, there are features like that, but nothing quite comparable. I mean, we're, we're at the cutting edge with these payment processors. Like I said, it's the largest one. I think it's the largest in the world. Um, they do, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars a year in volume through their platform. So uh, we're working with them. I think you know, we'll, we'll have first access to it. Awesome, man. All right. Last but not least, Scott. Man, this is a loaded question. <laughs> well, feel free to use the word inevitable as many times as you want. And then we'll get to Dr. Crypto. Well, I mean, everyone sat here and listened to all these gentlemen talk about their projects and what's coming. 
Um, and it's pretty apparent that every single one of them is an amazing project. And, you know, the people that have been in Dream, everything is, like I said before, is coming to fruition. And everything is going to start happening. But, like, me and Easy were on a call earlier and we were talking and everything is going to just start firing off. And all these projects are going to, you know, like Amino is going to launch. Um, obviously, you know, Dream is drastically going to benefit from that. Then Houdini is going to launch. We we have all the the pins lined up, and we're just ready to knock them down one by one by one. And you know, like Troy says, we're not going to rush um, and just throw out projects. But we have we have great projects lined up with utility built that's going to generate a lot of money coming in for Dream. Um, so as far as like where we're going to be. I don't know. Sky's the limit, really, because um, all these projects, like I said, are going to take off, and they're all going to gener generate money for a Dream. So, I mean, I could see us, man. I don't know, hundred million, over a hundred million, pretty easily. Um, we have to remember too, ETH is very close to the bottom. So, um, when ETH gets back up to you know a decent price. You know, the, the price of Dream itself is a lot higher than what it shows on the chart. So all I can say is to anyone down there listening and unsure is do your research and get involved in this ecosystem because it's going to pay, it will pay dividends. Yeah, and just to address all those flutters out there in those spaces that when Drew talks or any of us talk and talking about how one dev is launching multiple projects focused on one. The answer is very simple. Look at these gentlemen up here. You know, Drew is the CEO of Dream and Amino. You've got Easy E here. It's not Drew. You've got Lou here. He ain't Drew, right? So these projects coming off the Dream pad are not all Drew's projects. It's part of the Dream ecosystem. So just want to address that for people listening here and people listening to the recording, because that's one of the big things that I hear people talk about when they hear about Dream is, oh, he's just one guy launching a bunch of money grab projects. And that is the farthest thing from the truth. These are all legitimate companies with utility before launch, and he does not own all of them. Like just Scott just said, Dream benefits from all of them because that is the utility, you know, working with them in the incubator, helping with the contract, the marketing making the connections with all the top tier people in the in the financial world. That's what he brings to the table. And in return, whatever deals they set up, like like Lou alluded to and 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 Landed talked about and Easy he talked about, that's the revenue model. Yeah, all right, Dr. Crypto, what's up? Can I just add to that real quick? Yeah, yeah. Um you know, like just to add on to what you said about Drew, you know, being the CEO and of Amino and Dream. At the end of the day, like as far as Dream, I would say I pretty much do a lot of the stuff, like the day to day stuff for Dream. Like Drew is not really working on, he's working on Dream. I don't want it to come off the wrong way, but like I handle a lot of the day to day stuff. And then when it comes to the deals and doing that stuff and you know, the super important stuff, Drew is there. So he's, there's not like a lot of time necessarily devoted um, to Dream. Dream is like a, a self-sufficient running entity right now. And it doesn't need constant focus, you know. Um, so I, I just wanted to point that out, that it's not like he's he's over trying to do 9 million things at one time. Like he has the the right people in the right positions to do it and then it all goes back to what i was saying earlier about him being very good at doing that he he how he, he facilitates and gets the right people in the right positions to do the job so he doesn't necessarily have to do it and a lot of times maybe those people are better at doing the job than than he could even do so i just wanted to add to that Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, everything you're saying is, 
just straight facts there. And I appreciate you, you adding on to that. Cause you know, that you hear it too. I mean, I'm not the only one when people talk about it, it you know, it just, it, it's tiresome to hear the, the crap that people talk in, in DeFi. It just amazes me. But hey, Dr. Cripple, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Prof? Not uh, much. Just sharing some good stuff out here. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, I was just listening and taking some notes, you know, like a student, right? <laughs> yeah, um, um, you know, um, I've been uh, following Dream uh, for a while now, uh, looking at what. Uh, uh, dream team and um, you know the community is doing uh, the first time I heard from uh, about dream was the pesa base uh, during the pre-sale and everything and uh, you know uh, as an uh, investor uh, you have always uh, these fears uh, you know uh, because you just met people and always you know you have kind of looking around and trying to see what's going on. So I have been looking to, uh, you know, um, um, you know, PESA base, uh, you know, chat and uh, until I realized really that there are some, um, you know, some wallet in uh, PESA base, those guys, uh, although they were able to get in in pre-sale, uh, they are not, they, they really hold the floor. And then when I hear Scott mentioning that, it's because of the way those wells were selected. It's not just about mine and the integrity. It's like being like a gentleman uh, or women or ladies who decide that, you know, we have some principles of how we want to conduct ourselves. And this translates on all those charts um, really uh, I, I, I took time to look at them, and uh, yes, of course, uh, you know, um, I like this thing because, you know, uh, everything is not just the money, especially if you are looking to, uh, you know, your ambition to uh, having long-term investment. Uh, this is what my, uh, me personally, I'm looking for. It's not just throwing money somewhere and then pulling out. No, I want to have something sustainable for long term. So, um, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, I have another question. I've seen that uh, you pin uh, on the top here um, uh, some link on the NFT um, uh, uh, with uh, Binance. And I was, uh, I have some question in my mind, uh, which is uh, these NFTs uh, are related uh, mostly to uh, amino. Uh, is that mean that uh, now that you have a platform on Binance, some of those tokens you have in the ecosystem will be uh, having access to have their NFTs? Uh, what should I uh, expect from that move, actually? Thank you. Hold on, Landon. Drop down. He's coming back up again. That's a question for Landon. Sorry, I wasn't able to hear the uh, audience's questions. Can you just uh, repeat that for me, uh, one of the speakers? Yeah, Dr. Crypto, can you repeat that NFT question? Yes, uh, Lyndon, uh, um, I was asking, now that you have uh, access to, you know, uh, uh, Binance NFT uh, marketplace, uh, should, some, uh, should I, as an investor, say that now Dream have access to Binance, uh, you know, uh, 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 um, NFT and some of those token project can, can maybe derive going to NFT world or what should I interpret with this move with Binance uh, uh, NFT platform? Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a great question. Thank you for for that. Uh, it's very insightful. Uh, in terms of what it means. Obviously, to have a, it's more than just an NFT launch. To to kind of make it clear, it's it's a full blown strategic partnership with Binance NFT. So what that means is, uh, it's going to be. It's not just one drop. It's not just two drops. It's not just three drops. We're going to have over thirty different NFT drops uh, with Binance NFT. So, uh, in terms of your question specifically, what it means for Dream and how that relates to Dream. 
Uh, Dream is obviously the launch pad for Amino. So Amino's success, if, if Amino does as good as the market's anticipating and, and, and kind of as good as the hype is making it out to be, um, that alone w- will drive massive traction to, to Dream. People will be flooding into Dream because it'll be undervalued at any price uh, while, while Amino is kind of just soaring to, to new all-time highs after, after launch. So um, I wouldn't get too caught up on the um, kind of compartmentalization of what is actually happening. It's, it's simply a Binance NFT Amino uh, partnership where we're going to be launching multiple uh, NFT drops with uh, you know, in collaboration with massive celebrities like Clay Thompson, uh, and, and that's kind of all you should think about. It's it's going to be massive exposure for both Dream and Amino, and, and the best way to get access to Amino if you didn't get in on the private, or if you did get in but you want to just top off your bags, uh, would be to buy Dream because that's kind of the best exposure right now uh, to get the upside of of Amino. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, I'll give a couple more seconds. Anyone have any questions? I know we're hitting our 90 minute time frame here and everybody, everyone listening and all the guest speakers here, obviously all of our time is valuable, especially at the evening time. Does anyone else have any questions? Go ahead and request a mic. I already pulled our, I pulled a couple of winners because I always have this issue. So we have people that do the contest, but aren't even in the room. So I made sure I picked more than a, more than a couple. Um, but I'll give you guys a couple more seconds if you have any questions for these gentlemen on here repping their individual projects. No? No questions? All right. Well, let's get to the winner. See so who's going to get 200 bucks in Tether, and then we'll wrap it up here. The first person I got on the list is Natalia. So is there a Natalia in the room? Go ahead and request a mic or give me an emoji. Um, if anyone can help me scroll through here, I'm looking. I don't I don't see Yak. No, Yak, I didn't pull your name, sorry. Uh, yes, I don't, I don't see her either. All right, let's go to the next one. So the next one is uh, Veride, V-A-R-I-D-E. Let's do that. If not, I'll do a Professor, couple. Sir, have we ever got the first one? Has the first person that got called ever been in the room? Natal, I don't know. I haven't been looking. I have no idea. Because I know a lot of people do it on my Twitter account and they don't come in. So I always like to pull a couple of them. How about the, the Duke of Nigeria? <laughs> Is that the guy that emailed me that I'm a long lost family me- member? Uh, Duke of Nigeria. If not, I might just message. I'm not going to keep you guys here all night. I'll try one more and see what we got here. Uh, let's see here. Is there a CC? CC. Oh, we got we got a request for a question while I'm doing this. The man himself, Sir Crypto. Uh, CC, while he's connecting. Nope, no CC. All right, one more name, and I'll just message somebody. Uh, Alida, L-E-L-I-D-A. I got to start just doing it in the group instead of ahead of time. No. All right, well, I'll contact the winner there. So, Crypto, you're up. You yeah, can search them. You can search these people to see if they're in here or not. <laughs> yeah, I know. My bad. I'm learning. I'm going to search for you. That's <laughs> what came up. Oh, you have a question? Let's see. I don't, I'm, ready, I'm ready to rock and roll with these guys now. Uh, talk to Landon a little bit. Just ready to go. I sent a message, actually. And, uh, yeah, I felt easy before. I'm ready, I'm ready to get this thing going. Waiting on Amino and I'm doing the rock and roll, bro. Oh, trust me, I know a lot of people. I feel like slow. I feel like sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. No, you're good, sir. I feel like everyone is slowly going to be coming over to Dream and the Dream ecosystem, whether they want to or not. If they want good projects in the crypto space, they, in some way, shape, or form, they will become part of this ecosystem. Oh yeah, I'm doing I'm doing my my best job to get people in there. I know some people uh, a little hesitant, but you know the problem is, is we all know that people like to buy green candles and, <laughs> and don't want to buy on the low. So they'll, they'll they'll be chasing that before they know in a blink of an eye it'll be over a dollar. Um, 
But I appreciate everybody's time. If no one else has any questions, thank you, Scott. Uh, thank you, Easy. Thank you, Landon. Thank you, Cryptitus. Give those guys a follow. Um, they, they're all amazing. They all know a lot about crypto and especially their projects in general. Pay attention, guys. Pay attention to the Dream Ecosystem. We've been talking about it for months, but now this is the thing. This is the thing that irks me, but I want everyone to win. Is I personally brought in some friends from real life. Some of them told me, "No, I'm not putting my crypto. It's a scam." But I did get some of them in there, and we've all been adding since January. And now we got guys coming in, and it's not the low. I think was three or four cents for Dream, and now it's like around twelve cents, eleven cents. But you know, people are getting in now. And we've all been waiting and chomping at the bit. And I'm sure Scott can attest how many times I've asked him questions about things happening. But now people are getting in and they're going to just turn their head. And all of a sudden they're going to be looking at their wallet and going, holy crap. And all of us have been sitting there salivating <laughs> since the beginning of the year. So uh, I want everybody to win. Like I said at the beginning, like I always say in my spaces, we're all here to make money. And there are a lot of good projects out there. Uh, you'll never see me talk bad about another project. I just share about what I know and what's making me money. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of good winners out there. So definitely do your do your research. Uh, check out Dream. Check out all these projects. Uh, I will post the video link of this recording tomorrow or later tonight. But in my profile, um, I started a YouTube channel a couple of months ago to put these spaces on there. But I'm also doing token reviews for a couple of these projects. I did one for Bitcoin. I did one for Pesa Base. No one's paying me. Um, but I am sharing just information from an investor standpoint because I am not a team member of any of these projects. I'm just a big investor and I'm really high on what these guys are doing uh, because they're making money. And at the end of the day, we're here to make money, be a part of a strong community. And at the end of the day, we all can win, whether it's the dream ecosystem or projects like Koa or Cult or anything out there that are doing great things. We all can make money. Uh, we just have to be smart about it and stop chasing chasing the crap out there and try to make a quick buck. So like Dr. Crypto said, he said exactly my sentiment is that these are long-term investments for me personally. My strategy is I kind of go all in what I can on these projects. And over time, I'll take small profits because um, I'm in a position where I do have a good job and I do make money and my wife makes money. So I'm able to do that. Some people aren't in the same position. But that's my strategy because I know these things are going to be ATMs for years, uh, years to come. I have no doubt saying that. And these guys are all doing great things in the short term and the long term. And I'm a, I'm honored to be to have found Dream back in January and have the opportunity to get in all of these pre-sales. And everyone else can do that too. Scott said it. Definitely DM Scott if you have questions about Dream and investing just whatever dollar amount. And also if you're in Dream, if you want to be a Dream well. Because I just want to reiterate, you know, that doesn't mean hundreds of thousands of dollars. So your gateway to get in pre-sales of all these projects is to hold dreams. Doesn't matter if it's a thousand dollars a dream, five hundred or a hundred thousand. That's your gateway to get into these pre-sales. That's how I got to Pesabase. That's how I got into Amino. That's how I'm going to get into Houdini Swap and any other project that's coming after that. So you don't have to be a massive investor to get the benefits of holding dreams. So I can't say that enough to people. So I thank all of you for your time. Um, I'll, I'll post this recording when I edit it and put it up on the YouTube channel. Um, but obviously, if you can't wait, you want to share it. You know, Twitter is recorded. You could just share it off my uh, Twitter page. So everyone have a great rest of your night. Um, next week, I don't have it in front. Actually, you know, actually, speak of the devil, I believe. I don't have the calendar in front of me. But next week, um, I've got a couple of gentlemen. One of them's in the room every day. And we're going to be talking about shorting and longing so a little technical stuff i believe that's next week i don't have it in front of me but i'm gonna learn yeah it's next week. yeah it's next week. awesome so i'm gonna do my research because i have no idea what any of that stuff is laugh all you want so that's why i bring these guys in to talk about it so with all that being said once again have a great night catch you next wednesday night 8 p.m eastern standard time and guys enjoy the rest of your evening the rest of your week and i'll see you next week and scott you got a quick quick comment or are you just saying bye no, I was just saying bye. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are great. Job, man. Thank you, man. You guys have a great rest of your night, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye.